steganography is where you hide a message within a, a, a given a file uh, in our case we are about to use a, a image file so in this project we will be encoding a message into an image file so as to conceal it so let's go ahead and create a, a project directory uh, let me name it uh, steg uh, simple i'll vs code into the folder so let me create the html file and let me get the basic template so the first thing is we'll be using a library for the project so the name of the library is uh, steganography.js so uh, let's go to the website and uh, download the library So this is their website and you can uh, download the version by clicking this button. Uh, once you get the file, you can extract it and uh, and within this, the file that we need is the steganography.min within the build folder. Uh, of course, we can use uh, this uh, file too, but uh, the min version uh, won't have any spaces and the entire code will, will be within a single line. So for processing, it would be a little faster. So let me quickly copy this and uh, paste it uh, within the project directory. So now let me uh, include the file in the header. So in order to check uh, whether the file is working, uh, what we shall do is, uh, let's write another script within the body. So let me create the file index.js and uh, we can console log the object called stig. So this uh, object called stig is provided by the library at the window level. Now let's open this project with the live server. Uh, the live server is a, a tool that you can uh, get with VS Code. This is very useful uh, as it offers a live reloading of our project. So if you check the console, uh, yeah, we do get the steg object. Fine. It's working fine. So the library has been included fine and uh, we can uh, start using the a library so the so we'll be using two functions of this library one is the encode function and the other is the decode function so the encode function it takes in uh, three parameters uh, sorry the encode uh, parameter takes in the encode function takes in uh, two parameters one is the text value of the string that is to be encoded let's uh, say it is uh, hello and the second is the uh, image the source image into which we are uh, about to encode this uh, message into similarly the decode function takes in uh, one parameter which is the image and uh, it returns the string with uh, it returns the string that is encoded within this image so let's start uh, structuring our html document so uh, within a html document the first thing that we need is a uh, uh, we need a file input that let, uh, lets us select a file. So let's quickly make it. We need a file input. And the uh, file input, uh, uh, we shall give it a name of uh, img and uh, the id. Uh, for the moment, we need not uh, give it an id. And uh, let's say that it accepts only uh, uh, image type files that is uh, jpeg uh, pngs etc uh, and uh, we give it a event which is on change so this on change uh, event will trigger a function called a read url with the this parameter so so let's write this uh, so we define this function within the index.js file. Uh, let me uh, quickly hide this and uh, 
so this function uh, the function's name is uh, read url so this function takes in the file as the input and uh, and what we do is we create a reader object of the file reader class and we set it a function or called onload so this function gets triggered uh, once the file has been read, uh, read so we define the function so what we do is Uh, let's for the time being uh, console log the result so So this is the basic version of our uh, read URL function. You can easily find it online if you search for how to read the imported file in client side JavaScript. So uh, how this works is that uh, uh, in, within this input, we'll have, an array, uh, we'll have an array containing of the files that, had, that has been chosen. So this uh, array contains the files that has been selected by the user. So we, we select the first file and uh, we read the first file so once this operation is complete uh, this function gets triggered uh, where we are console logging the result of uh, what the file has uh, has read so now let's run it so let me select the file uh, let me use this image and uh, yeah uh, we are getting the entire uh, data of the image that we uh, imported right now so it's working as we expected to now what we'll be doing is once the image has been imported we'll uh, uh, display it to the user so we write the uh, uh, image tag so the image tag so let's give in an uh, id for this uh, image tag uh, let's call it uh, image one so what we'll do is we'll select this image tag uh, we can select this as uh, document dot query selector pound image one and we'll set the source of this image as the data uri of the image so now uh, if I select the file, I should be able to view it. Yeah, uh, it's working. So this is our source image. So let's uh, call it call it our uh, source image. And then uh, uh, the next thing that we need to create is an uh, input box. So we create an input of uh, type text and uh, let's give it an id to be able to easily select it uh, let the id be text so and then we create a button so the button says hide message into image so once we click this button uh, we take in the text that we have typed here and we encode it into the message so let's write the function so we write a function called uh, on the event of on click uh, we call a function called hide text so let's uh, define the function we call the encode method and uh, uh, the first parameters is the value of what we have typed here so that can be obtained by uh, selecting the input box uh, we had uh, earlier named it as uh, a, as an id of text so we select it we select the value of it and uh, as the second uh, parameter uh, we pass in the uh, image uh, the uri of the image so 
let's store the URI of an image in the, in a global variable. So let's create a variable called data image URI and let's store in this value. So let me uh, declare the variable. So now we'll be able to access the image data URI within this function. So this takes in two parameters. One is the value that we have typed here and the second one is the image and it returns the encoded format of the image. So let me console log it. And let's uh, delete this console log statement. We no longer need it. So now, once we select an image and we type in something and we click this button, yeah, we get the image URI, uh, which contains the encoded uh, message. So yeah, now what uh, we shall do is uh, we shall uh, create a image called destination image and we shall display this uh, source URI in the image format. So what we do is we create another image uh, tag. Uh, let's give this an uh, ID of image two and we select this image two. And uh, give it the source of the return value of this function, which is the encoded data URI. Now let's uh, try it out. Yeah, so as you can see, the image has been uh, encoded. So this is the original image and this is the image into which the uh, text has been encoded into. Uh, perfect. So the next thing that we'll be doing is uh, we'll create another uh, uh, file input. We'll create another file input which takes in the encoded image and gives back the text that has been encoded into it. So let's do that. So what we do is we create another uh, input tag and uh, this calls something called a decode. Let's give it another name just so uh, the file names don't collide. And now let's define the decode function. So we define a function called uh, decode, uh, which takes in the input. Uh, it is essentially the, for the most part is similar to this function with a major change. So let's quickly copy paste this and uh, make the change. So the change is that uh, uh, we take the value of the URI and uh, we decode it. Uh, we take the value of the URI and we decode it. So let's call the stack.decode function and we pass in e.target.result to it. Now let's console log this uh, value of stick.decode. So let's uh, select an image. We write in, a, uh, we encode it. And now let's download this image, the encoded image, and we give it to the second uh, parameter. Now, if you check the console, we should be getting the image. Yeah. So uh, uh, we're getting the value, the decoded value as we require it to. So now we can display this uh, value to the user. So we create an uh, H2 tag with the uh, decoded text. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we create a H2 tag and we give it an ID of uh, decoded. So now we can uh, select this uh, H2 tag and place the uh, text, the decoded text into this. So now, instead of console logging, what we shall do is we shall uh, select the H2 tag 
with the id of decoded and uh, we can set the inner text of it to be the written value of stack.decode now let's uh, try it out we select the picture we encode something like hi there and we download this picture the uh, encoded picture and we drag and drop this here okay we are uh, getting an error uh, okay i made a typo uh, the id should have been uh, decoded uh, we use the css selector only when selecting it here so the id is decoded and we select it here now it should work uh, let's give it a try again we select the original image we write something into encode it into this image we download the encoded image and we drag and drop here yeah it's working as we want it to so that is almost the functionality is complete so now let's add a bit of styling so i have added in a bit of styling to make it uh, to make it look uh, a bit neat so uh, i've added semantic ui i've restructured the document and i've uh, used the appropriate semantic ui classes to make the buttons look uh, better and i've added a custom css file to uh, add some basic layout to it now let's check the project yeah this is the final project and now uh, let's give it a final test so we select a new image we encode something like hi there we hide it within this text we download this image and drop drag and drop it here and yeah it's working fine thank you so much for watching